Hello, and a warm welcome to all of our dedicated listeners and furniture industry professionals. This is Furniture Industry News, brought to you by FurniturePodcast.com, your premier source for all the latest developments, trends, and essential insights in the world of furniture. Whether you're looking to stay on top of market analyses, eager for news that impacts your business, or just curious about the newest advancements in data, we've got you covered. In today's episode, we're diving into recent optimistic trends in the housing market, how they're shaping the furniture industry, and much more. From the latest financial results of industry giants to strategic corporate moves and innovations in retail software, we ensure that you are not just keeping pace, but staying a crucial step ahead in this ever-evolving market. So, wherever you may be, in the comforts of your office, navigating the factory floor, or on the road to your next big client meet, thank you for choosing us as your source of furniture industry news. Let's get into the insights that matter to you. As we transition into the spring season, a traditional time for renewal and growth, it's interesting to note that the housing market is exhibiting signs of optimism, particularly among those looking to sell their homes. The Fannie Mae Home Purchase Sentiment Index, or HPSI, has illustrated this nicely as it rose for the third consecutive month and reached its highest level in nearly two years. In the latest report, the February HPSI edged up by 2.1 points to 72.8, marking a steady rise from the low-level plateau that had characterized much of 2023. This rise is significant, 14.8 points higher year-over-year in fact. Diving deeper into the numbers, 65% of consumers in February felt it was a good time to sell, up from 60% the previous month. This is a strong indicator of confidence in the housing market as sellers anticipate favorable conditions and the potential for profitable sales. Importantly for our industry, this is often a precursor to increased furniture sales as new home buyers seek to furnish their spaces. And while optimism is high on the seller's side, we can't overlook the buyer's perspective. Unfortunately, less than 20% believe it is a good time to buy, a figure overshadowed by the seller's confidence. This disparity is influenced by the expectation of falling mortgage rates over the next 12 months, which may bode well for the spring home buying season. Senior Vice President and Chief Economist at Fannie Mae, Doug Duncan, suggests that if consumer expectations align with reality and rates move closer to the 6% mark by year end, sentiment on both sides of the transaction could improve, potentially leading to a further thawing of the housing market. However, Despite these potential positives, affordability remains a daunting challenge for buyers until a meaningful addition to net supply arrives. The underlying takeaway here is that the furniture industry should stay tuned to these housing trends as they may signal shifts in demand for home furnishings in the upcoming months. It's clear that the housing market is intrinsically linked to ours, and as industry professionals, staying informed is crucial for strategic planning and anticipating consumer needs. As we delve into the driving forces of today's furniture market, it's clear that younger consumers are at the forefront. Research from Consumer Insights Now points to a significant demographic shift. Seven out of 10 furniture purchases from January through June are expected to be made by Gen Z and millennials. That's consumers aged 18 to 43 for those keeping track. With a consistent trend since 2022, This data should not catch industry veterans by surprise, but is a clarion call for adaptation and strategy. The details matter here. Younger buyers show a discernible preference to engage with designers, indicating a desire for customized, tailored home interiors. Sofas and decor are at the top of their shopping lists, spanning items like area rugs, decorative accessories, and wall art. A testament to their focus on creating unique and personalized living spaces. The way these consumers shop has also evolved. We're seeing a notable tilt towards showrooming browsing in physical locations, but opting for the cost savings of online purchases. This is particularly prevalent among younger shoppers, with more than 50% indicating their propensity for such buying behavior. But it's not just about how they buy, it's also about how much they're willing to spend. Data suggests that these younger buyers are poised to invest more generously in certain categories like upholstery, mattresses, and primary bedroom furniture. An interesting note for retailers, although they represent a smaller portion of the market, baby boomers and Gen X consumers remain significant, often with more established financial resources to allocate towards higher-end purchases. 
For retailers and suppliers geared towards a younger demographic, this is a clear signal to align products and marketing strategies with these insights. Digital storefronts need to be robust, seamless, and engaging to attract and retain this tech-savvy cohort. And perhaps there's wisdom in considering loyalty programs or partnerships with popular online platforms that resonate with this demographic. In conclusion, staying atop of these youthful buying trends isn't just about catching waves. It's about understanding the sea change in consumer behavior and harnessing its potential for growth in the furniture industry. Keep tuned for more trends and insights that keep you ahead of the curve. In the midst of recovering from the economic wrinkle left by the COVID-19 pandemic, furniture retailers have encountered another hurdle significant delays in receiving the employee retention credit funds. The ERC, a refundable tax credit aimed at helping eligible businesses retain their workforce, has been caught up in a bottleneck of claims. A mix of legitimate submissions and fraudulent ones has led the IRS to slow the payout process, placing financial strain on those counting on these funds. The retail landscape is rife with stories of ERC tumult. High Point, North Carolina, a city at the heart of the furniture industry, is seeing its retailers grappling with the cash crunch. Many who anticipated these funds to shore up their finances have found alternative sources of funding, like merchant cash advances or MCAs, to stay afloat. However, these quick fixes come with their own set of pitfalls. Retailers like Wallaroo's Furniture and Mattresses in Utah, for instance, have experienced the sting of high repayment rates and potential legal repercussions when quick cash solutions go awry. Darlene Leonard from Smith. Leonard offers prudent advice for retailers in such situations. Seek long-term relationships, particularly with local banks that understand your business's ebb and flow. Local bankers, familiar with a retailer's operations, can provide short-term lines of credit to bridge the gap until the ERC funds find their way into the retailer's accounts. As this unfolds, furniture companies are urged to exercise caution when considering alternative funding. Whilst the ERC delays are creating challenging times, retailers are encouraged to consult with financial advisors, attorneys, and strategize their next steps wisely. During this tightrope walk of financial strain, it's clear that a savvy combination of patience and prudence is paramount for furniture retailers aiming to navigate through the delays in employee retention credit funds. In today's global economy, the efficiency of supply chains is paramount, especially in the realm of home furnishings. We're closely monitoring the resilience of the industry amidst significant disruptions, The National Retail Federation, alongside Hackett Associates, has recently cast a light on an encouraging trend. Despite the turbulence caused by healthy rebels in the Red Sea, inbound cargo volume at key U.S. container ports is on an ascent. The Global Port Tracker's findings suggest substantial year-on-year increases set to continue well into the first half of this year. As the threat escalated, supply chain managers swiftly redesigned their logistics. To circumvent the Red Sea's perilous waters— carriers now navigate an alternative route around the Cape of Good Hope. This not only bypasses the risk, but maintains the steady flow of consumer goods and materials essential for the furniture market. On the Pacific front, retailers are adapting as some imports to America's East Coast pivot westward. It's an impressive testament to the versatility and quick thinking of those orchestrating the cargo movement. The impact of these shifts is palpable. According to NRF Vice President for Supply Chain and Customs Policy Jonathan Gold, Retailers are doggedly working with their partners to minimize these disruptions. Goods are still arriving on time, quelling the fear of inflationary pressures due to heightened transportation costs. It's a balancing act between mitigating additional expenses and ensuring consumer demands are met without a hitch. This recalibration isn't without its side effects. Rerouted cargo and the provisional use of the Panama Canal does come with the consequence of delays and incremental costs. Nevertheless, our trade's heartening pulse continues to beat strong. Retailers persist, ensuring their shelves and showrooms stay stocked with the beautiful and functional pieces customers are coming to expect. As we look at the numbers, it's clear the industry isn't just steadying the ship, it's sailing forward. The Global Port Tracker projects the first half of 2024 could see upwards of 11.5 million 20-foot equivalent units pass through American ports. That's a 7.8% jump from last year. The logistical dance behind the scenes is without a doubt, a critical factor in these buoyant figures. 
The collective response to these supply chain shocks exemplifies the furniture industry's resilience and adaptability. It's a reassuring sign for retailers and consumers alike that even as challenges rise, the sector finds a way to deliver. In an intriguing play to bolster its portfolio in the off-price market, Beyond Incorporated, parent company to Bed Bath & Beyond, and prominent e-commerce player Overstock.com has announced a strategic acquisition that will expand its digital retail prowess. Beyond has acquired the intellectual property and associated assets of Zulili, a trailblazing flash sale site at a purchase price of $4.5 million, funded entirely through cash on hand. Beyond Incorporated's aptly named executive chairman Marcus Limonis expressed confidence in the acquisition, emphasizing an opportunity to meet customer demands across various price points and to improve vendor inventory rotations. This move solidifies Beyond Incorporated's foothold in the off-price sector, where aggressive deals and discounted selections are foundational. The Zulili integration is anticipated to be smooth sailing, with expectations of the site being operational by the end of the second quarter of 2024, contributing to Beyond's 24-month revenue targets without burdening the company with incremental fixed expenses. Once known for catering to young mothers with an assortment that included children's apparel and women's fashion, Zulili's expanded product categories now comprise home decor, toys, and even furniture. This acquisition, therefore, could signify a regrouping and possible resurgence of the brand under Beyond's diverse omnicanal umbrella. The synergy is undeniable, with a reported 18 million customers of Zulili poised to re-engage under the Beyond banner, all while leveraging existing infrastructures in logistics, fulfillment, and operations. Dave Nielsen, CEO at Overstock, highlighted the significance of this integration with Overstock's business model, citing that the core competencies of the once-independent flash sale service echo Overstock's own, promising an attractively priced cornucopia for deal-hungry consumers. The acquisition of Zulili could be a masterstroke, weaving into the warp and weft of Beyond's strategy to present a strong off-price e-commerce experience. As the competitive landscape for online furniture retail evolves, with giants vying for market share, Beyond Incorporated as latest acquisition sends a clear message. They intend to be a force that both competitors and consumers will have to reckon with. In a significant shift within the lighting industry, Lamps Plus has announced the forthcoming closure of Pacific Coast Lighting, their notable wholesale division that has operated for 45 years. This heralds an end of an era for a brand that has long furnished department and furniture stores with its range of portable lighting solutions. This strategic move comes as Lamps Plus decides to channel its business acumen into an enhanced focus on e-commerce and retail operations, along with their pros business, which caters to designers and contractors. This pivot reflects a broader industry trend towards direct-to-consumer engagement and online commerce. While Pacific Coast Lighting represented a relatively small portion of Lamps Plus's overall operations, its contributions and long-standing partnerships in the sector have been significant. In the coming months, a concerted effort will be made to work with partners in liquidating the remaining inventory. For one final showcase, Pacific Coast Lighting will grace the High Point market with a presence in April, providing an opportunity for close-out deals and final orders. This closure, although lamentable for many within the industry, presents Lamps Plus with new avenues to innovate and enhance customer service. The shift signifies a future focused on product innovation, adaptability, and a seamless customer experience aimed at maintaining Lamps Plus position as a leading brand in exceptional lighting. In a move that underscores the importance of building and nurturing customer relationships in the furniture industry, Storis has introduced a significant update to their retail software suite. The latest enhancement sees the inclusion of loyalty program features, which are designed to bolster customer retention for furniture retailers. This strategic upgrade integrates tiered membership levels, allowing retailers to offer customized experiences and rewards to different customer segments. Customers can now earn points with each purchase, a feature anticipated to encourage repeat business and increase lifetime value. Additionally, the update introduces the option of subscription-based loyalty programs, providing an avenue for retailers to secure ongoing engagement through recurring benefits. But it's not just about accruing points. 
Members can enjoy benefits such as exclusive pricing, unique financing options, and waivers on delivery fees, making each shopping experience feel personalized and rewarding. Auto-applied incentives ensure a seamless interaction, minimizing friction and enhancing the overall customer journey. Stories is responding to market insights indicating that paid loyalty programs boost average order values. With this update, they leverage data that suggests 77% of consumers who subscribe to retail services are inclined to make additional purchases from those brands. As furniture retailers seek to innovate in customer experience, Storis is positioning itself as a key partner in their growth, giving them the tools to foster loyalty and, ultimately, drive sales. Turning to the financial landscape within our industry, we see a mixed bag of performances among some key players. As we venture into the numbers, let's start with Mattress Firm. The betting retailer feels the weight of the market as its net revenues take a 5% dip to $924.8 million for the first fiscal quarter. Store numbers also saw a slight decrease as net income fell to $8.9 million. Despite these challenges, the company remains committed to its strategic initiatives, notably its anticipated acquisition by Tempor Sealy. Over at our house, we see resilience personified as the retailer notches its second consecutive $1 billion year. 2023 saw a 4.8% revenue increase to $1.288 billion fueled by showroom and e-commerce channels. The year ended on a high note with robust delivery order backlogs, albeit tempered by an 8.3% drop in adjusted net income to $125.83 million. Growth remains on the agenda, with plans to roll out approximately 9 to 11 new showrooms. Heading north to Sleep Country Canada, we observe a climb in quarterly sales by 5.2% to $255.6 million, against the backdrop of a significant 44.5% slide in net income. E-commerce made notable strides, accounting for over 24% of total sales. The full fiscal year recorded a slight uptick in sales, while net income experienced a noticeable contraction. Culp, the textile manufacturer, narrows its loss to $3.2 million from a more substantial loss in the previous year's quarter. With upholstery and mattress fabric sales seeing a hearty climb, the company cites working through internal inefficiencies and market weakness as part of its recovery trajectory. Big Lots closes our roundup on a cautiously optimistic note. Despite a net loss for the fourth quarter and for the fiscal year overall, the retailer points to signs of improvement, with adjusted operating profit marking a positive turn. Net sales for the quarter saw a 7.2% decrease, and the full year was marked by significant net loss. However, the projections for 2024 suggest a more grounded optimism, banking on strategic actions to drive growth and profitability. Each of these financial reports tells a unique story of adaptation and perseverance in a dynamic furniture landscape. As professionals in the industry, we can glean insights from these narratives to inform our business strategies and navigate the economic tides. Stay tuned to Furniture Industry News for further in-depth analyses and up-to-the-minute reporting on the financial health of the industry's major players. As we wrap up this episode of Furniture Industry News, let's revisit the key insights that are shaping our industry. We delved into the growing optimism in the housing market and its promising indicators for furniture sales. The significant influence of younger consumers on furniture buying trends can't be overlooked, as their preferences are setting the direction for retail strategies. We tackled the hurdles retailers face with employee retention credit delays and how alternative financing options are being considered. We also observed how the furniture supply chain is adapting to global challenges, ensuring cargo volume continues its upward trajectory. The strategic maneuvers of Beyond Incorporated through acquisitions highlight the agility required to thrive in the off-price market. And while we say goodbye to Pacific Coast Lighting, we recognize the ever-evolving nature of the industry. Advancements from stories in retail software underscore the importance of customer loyalty in maintaining market share. And of course, our financial roundup provided a snapshot of the economic health within various segments of our sector. To continue receiving expert analysis and up-to-the-minute news, stay tuned to Furniture Industry News from FurniturePodcast.com. Your feedback and engagement power our community, so we encourage you to share your thoughts and join the conversation. Until next time, 
Keep navigating the ins and outs of the furniture industry with confidence and clarity. Thank you for listening, and we look forward to joining you on the next episode.